Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week, Hollow Knight. Yes, there's more DLC on the way, and believe it or not, believe it or not, this is the big one, and I'm going to review a $70 game capture card for science. The Germans demand precision. The feral radar growls apprehensively. And do you believe in life after Ness? I can feel something inside, she said, and I really don't think you're strong enough. Steam brings down the Vaghammer. Over 80,000 accounts got smacked, and NVIDIA releases new drivers. Only time will tell what new and interesting ways these will break. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm old man Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the power back on. More about that later. Joined every week by a tamed Canadian podcaster in Toronto, one Jordan Sveng. Look at him. He's glorious. Mm, still got to get my poster. And from Britannia on the island, that is one Pedro Mateus. Look at that. And together with you in Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form. You know it. Cocaine Voltron. Good luck, YouTube. Um, <laughs> before we get started, would you like to play that quick game of what's going on in each other's life organs? Uh, Jordan, you've had an exciting week, right? I've been trying to get fucking travel plans sorted out. And the company I work for is like, hey, remember that date that you said we're at, you're absolutely <laughs> gonna you're gonna be heading out on? Yeah, that's getting delayed. I'm like, listen, man, I got I got obligations I gotta prepare for. I gotta I gotta I I, I gotta I gotta know. And they're like, oh, we don't, we don't fucking care. <laughs> oh, fun times. There, there's nothing the, the, like the, being the, in straight the, up flux. You're like, ah, shrug emoticon, man. Yeah, just like the, the joys of working for a soulless corporation with too much money on their hands. Right. <laughs> What's up, P baby? Well, over here, not much has been going on. I still need to uh, book in my exam for the Security Plus certification. It, it lasts for three years, so it might be, you know, might be worth it. I don't know. Better luck next time. Worth it. Over here, <laughs> uh, the the reason Jordan is so bright is because he's on this new fancy refurbished oh, monitor. Bye. It, it might be refurbished, king. but you know what? It's too good for us, but it looks nice. I still got to adjust all the coloring stuff but um one other thing is we've got all the bits together for jordan's box kickity it is it is we even get to test in the pre pre shoes uh god damn that sucked uh but <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it's set up in a way to where i can power on so basically it's press button receive canadian or bacon i don't know it's one or the other receive canadian press button in case of in case of Canadians, break glass. What's the horse up to this week, Canadian? Uh the horse is um the the, the horse is I don't I don't know. I was trying to think of some joke involving Angela Merkel and I'm just coming and drawing a blank. It's the steam Linux. Alright, this is from that one website, Tech Power Up. Apparently, the German court is going to ban vague dates such as coming soon or coming spoon in order to lure in pre-orders. Um, we don't really know much about this just yet other than um, right now uh, the German government is not particularly happy with things um, maybe like, maybe unlike the feral radar. We were talking about this a little earlier saying, oh yeah, no, it's coming soon. You can totally give us money and when the product comes out at a the date that we will tell you later, you'll 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 be sure to have it. Uh, the German government's having none of that. They're going to start putting some consumer protection laws uh, to that regard, and I think that's ultimately a good thing, right? Pre-orders are yeah. uh, uh, the cancer on the gaming space, especially because um, it it enable it enables companies to take your money and then just completely under deliver. There's no there's no accountability there. You're paying them up front. Um, I'm I'm a little concerned about uh, Feral though because. Their, they, their entire marketing department is um, kind of based around that. We were talking, though, in the pre-pre-super shows, and is this about specifically um, pre-soliciting pre, uh, pre-orders or just in general? We don't know. That's definitely a thing to look at. I mean, you know, with, the reason we're talking about this with Steam is because I'm sure everyone at home is tired of anytime you go by new releases or if you see a game. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that looks neat. And the only information is coming spoon. That's it. Just yeah. like, huh. And we were talking about this, I think, Wednesday and last night um, after trivia night was something that I've noticed on a daily basis of checking new releases is people with no release date 
no mention of when they're coming out and they're always changing and bumping they're coming soon to try to stay on top gaming the system yeah feral feral doesn't even know man because you know we had like the one person from marketing like throwing shade at the radar they're like uh ah, yeah screw that thing we don't even know how it works uh, yeah i think that was straight up ellie from feral she's like i don't know how the fuck that thing works <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, Germany isn't exactly on good terms when it comes to the video gaming market. I mean, they only just got the chance to play Doom. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, this is just going to make people feel even less uh, compelled to help a German person out. But then again, every German person who likes to play video games nowadays just goes to Poland, buys the game and brings it back. Well, here's another thing. We were talking uh, about the, the, Kickstarters think, earlier, and um, you know, uh, I see French even brought that up. Uh, here's the thing: that that might be the loophole. You can say a date doesn't fucking mean you get to stick to it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do we got up next? Up next, we titties. have well, well, we don't have titties. We have Steam putting a I, bit of a temporary. I, I have titties. <laughs> okay, then I don't. I feel inadequate now. Uh, but Steam is also putting another temporary kibosh on titties. Not a permanent one. They're not uh, censoring anyone. They're just saying, we're doing some changes to stuff, so your game will need to go through uh, a new process as we implement these new changes, because Valve wants to set the Steam store up so that people only see what they want to see. Good luck with that. Uh, and so games like those which contain erotic content have now been put on hold uh and uh, the developers of um shining song star nova actually made a tweet or a couple of tweets about it and said that yes uh valve put the game on hold but it's a temporary thing and once the new features are up we will uh let you know and the game will be available so I guess this is kind of like the um, the games that can and can't have the CMOS icon as to whether or not they support Linux. No, uh, this is Valve not making up their damn mind and throwing out rules, realizing <laughs> that, hey, we're Valve. We're going to just randomly change shit because of our flat company structure. And uh, yeah, make you the hell up on that because uh, it's got to be hell for game developers. Like, well, shit, am I, can I make money or not make money? And people want to buy my stuff. Uh, Jordan? I don't know. I, I think there may be like a little bit of a war going on between their sales department and their legal department. Legal department's like, hey, man, you got to cool it on the porn. We, uh, we might open us up some liabilities. And sale guys are like, oh, all right, but that's a lot of money we're not going to be getting. Yep. So I, I, I don't I don't know. It the the byline makes sense. And it's all it's always it's always fun to speculate Valve's ulterior motives. But yeah, I, I, th I think a lot of this just has to do with like not having a repeat of the Rust situation where everyone's like Steam page was flooded with dicks for a while. <laughs> this is true. There's nothing wrong with pixelated dicks. Hashtag caveman and rock. Um, but that's Valve not wasn't done. No, yeah, Valve no, no, wasn't done this week because on Tuesday they spooled up the vag hammer and they dropped it on 60,000 accounts and by the end of the morning on Wednesday they had banned another 28,411 accounts that's over that's almost 90,000 accounts if you're keeping score uh they basically they anyone that i'm guessing that just had a list going and 60,000 was the most that they could ban in a single day uh, so they, yeah, they just went down the list and nuked everyone from games like Counter-Strike Go, Dota, uh, basically every single game that, um, supports VAC, every single one of these 90,000 accounts cannot play them anymore. 90,000? It's 90,000 now? I thought it was 60. Six, six, uh, 60 initially and then another, um, uh, 28,000. Yeah, that's definitely a thing, man. I, I learned two things. One, R Vac underscore porn exist. Uh, yes. Yeah, that, 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 that's a bit of a. I, I guess it's for people chasing those justice boners. It's a, it's a fun read, and uh, damn, ninety thousand. That is a lot of programmable gerbils, man. Um, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. And we we were, we were talking about this too in the pre pre super shows, and it's like, what could it possibly be? My my theory is these are all accounts that have been flagged by their AI detection thing, mm -hmm. and they just got they had to scrub through them with a human just to make sure. And that that one, once that batch operation was done, then they they just like, okay, we've got our accounts flagged, kill them. 
Well, and I mean, then, Valve's completely closed for all you know. Somebody could have like accidentally dropped some tables and be like, oh, oh nope, oh, AI, AI banning system. Yes. <laughs> but, no. Yeah, no, like I, I like to imagine like Gaben completely shit faced with like a lampshade on his head, just like <laughs> stumbling through the Valve offices, like pressing random keys on different people's computers. Slinging his crowbar to... around, crying, where's Half-Life 3? <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and then at some point he like hits the magic key combination by accident just to nuke these guys' accounts. That's probably the real story behind this. It is true. <laughs> uh, so let's get into a few game updates we have this week, starting with uh, probably my favorite platformer ever, Hollow Knight, Gods and Glory, release date, epic new album, and new merch. Uh, they do make a point to say, Hey guys and gals, this is the big one. Kind of like they're implying the other what three DLC free hundred yeah. percent weren't big. They were. Um, it's going to land in your face, Oregon, August twenty third. And yeah, man, they said it's going to be the largest pack, and they weren't lying. Man, there's going to be a bunch of new stuff, NPCs, new quest, final chapter for the night. And uh, I, now that it's done, I'm going to continue like the eighty hours I have in this game. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it now now it's about two hundred hours apparently. Yep, <laughs> it's uh, it's so good. Yeah, um, and at the same time that they've made this announcement, they also released Gods and Nightmares, which is not free. It's uh, four ninety nine. Uh, you can get it. Uh, it's on Steam now. It's available. So if you well, like, if, if, if you go get it. <laughs> if you're if you're anti MP three as well, you can pick up the record as in yeah. like the physical vinyl as well. They're doing. They're doing a vinyl release of that. I'll get the DLC, know, how, man. I'm not getting the record. How, how, big, of a, how big of a hipster do you have to be, though, <laughs> to, to get game soundtracks on vinyl? Dude, they're out there, and they're angry at you right now. They're going <laughs> to get on their fixie, <laughs> right into your house, and, and they're going to crush their empty PBR can <laughs> right on your forehead and put out their American spirit on your nose. Um... Let's see. What do we on, have? Uh, on my gnomes. On your gnomes, Postal 2, it's out. News. 5023 update that rolls off the tongue uh paradise lost man everything's updated and uh what do we have in here uh it's now available in moon speak also known as portuguese mm -hmm. and i'm and all the other languages to be fair well this <laughs> is true too uh it's been localized into fuck and everything else uh polish russian previously only available on windows yay they've added chinese bunch of bug fixes couple of small uh what changes to the credits and all that fix some music reduce the volumes of cutscenes. uh hey yeah, i just wanted but... to give this a mention mainly because it's nice to see games still getting updates 15 years after release oh yeah and, <laughs> and, and, indeed they they even have a they even have an update they, they fixed a bug where apparently you couldn't light uh, gas trails on fire so now you can pro probably koala.gif in your Postal <laughs> 2 game and Paradise Lost. That's all. That's always good. Pedro, aren't you excited? You can finally play the game and understand what they're saying? <laughs> uh -huh. I, 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 I mean, they, they have, um, to, to be fair, they have the, the Portuguese dub and then the real Portuguese subtitles. Oh, nice. Yes, uh, they actually have... Uh, yeah, no, they have proper Portuguese, which is strange to see because everything is Brazilian Portuguese nowadays. I so I am kind of curious. Uh, this may actually be a stream I do at some point, just play the game uh, in the Portuguese. And just be like a straight-up insufferable <laughs> cunt saying what they got wrong. <laughs> no, 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 just do the entire stream in Portuguese so no one can fucking understand you. Great. And then we have like this massive um, Portuguese audience and yeah. showing up next Saturday and they're like, what the fuck, mate? Uh, and, and what's going to be great, too, is they're all going to be Brazilians. Oh, that would be yeah. delicious. <laughs> so there's another game that they haven't even started working on yet. No, what WTF, no, no. mate? Yeah, so uh, War Tech Fighters. Clever, not really. Uh, they were supposed to have a Linux version at some point. And, well, now that the game has been released, they said, since the game has been through many changes and transformations from the original release, we don't have any date for Linux Mac version yet. Oh, God, please don't kill me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, uh, it's another game that promised Linux and did not deliver. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. It's, it's a <laughs> Unity game, too, so yeah. you know it's just like, some developer is way too lazy to go through the menus to find the export to the next button just to even give people like, hey, you, we want we to listen to some feedback. But I, I checked. They did not have a Kickstarter or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So 
so at least this isn't another in the string of broken promises from crowdfunding. This is just no, this good is, old fashioned lazy devs. Well, you know, th- this is a hundred percent. This is one thing that we've said multiple times. It's like, just, just be honest. All right. You're, you're not fooling anybody. You're not dealing with windows users. You're not dealing with Mac users. When you spin some shit, like, well, you know, there's been some changes. Like you, have, you, you, you haven't even tapped that export button to see what type of shit you need to get started on. Have you, uh, mm. poof, smoke cloud. And the thing is, with Unity games, what are exactly what kind of transformation did it go through that all of a sudden that export option is no longer Pedro, viable Pedro, Pedro, for Pedro. They haven't even checked that. They don't know. <laughs> they made it. No, 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 you see, it has a hard dependency on the Windows version of WinRAR. Yeah, <laughs> right. Fucked. That's it. That's it. Um, splash. Splash, yeah. This, um, this is... Uh, Stranded deep. That's the that's the thing I was looking for. Good good job, Brandon. Um they they have uh with uh, version 049 or 4702, they have a uh, they ha- finally have uh Linux versions out. This is a uh this is sort of a Tom Hanks simulator. It's a uh, trapped at stranded well, on a desert island, survive, explore, because you should no pun intended, stop holding your All right, breath. Wait a minute. I'll tap the brakes on this right now. Hang on. Go back to that fucking picture. I might have to pick that up. Can you can you go fishing for sharks with explosives? Yeah. Apparently you can. Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> See that, that that that's a stream. We're we're going shark hunting, boys. Making some <laughs> soup. Uh, it's single player. That's the problem. Uh, yeah, well, I, like like I said, it's it's trying, it's aiming to be sort of like a, in the vein of subnautica, because that was really, really huge. Mm-hmm. back a couple months ago or in the previous year so i mean it, it's it's definitely a thing you can you can play it on the linux now it looks okay like you, i i don't it, so. it doesn't look terrible yeah we've seen worse yeah um is and, this unreal or is this unity i think it's unreal oh that's yeah, gonna run like it shit looks um. unreal <laughs> unreal all right coming up next I'm, I'm gonna go take some drugs and get yes. into a different state of mind. Speaking of which, state of mind. It's a new game that's well that will be available uh, on August fifteenth, twenty eighteen, uh, and it looks different. Just looking at the graphics, you can see the low poly characters and the heavy use of a uh, cell shading triangles and, the very- and disco yes. balls. <laughs> And the very muted but fitting looking color scheme, uh, which uh, I don't know, it looks good. And it's by Datelik uh, Entertainment. Uh, you probably know them from games such as, uh, I don't know, we've had a few, the Derponia series. I know it's Deponia, it just sounds better saying Derponia. Uh, Air, there's also, there was another one that we played. Air, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, these guys have a good pedigree when it comes to games and, you know, going by their pedigree, it's probably going to be an adventure type game, uh, and 25, 99 pounds. It's currently 10% off. If you'd like to pre-order, don't don't do it. It's going to be a a big honking game, man. It's going to take 23 gigajoules of storage and the elusive direct X nine dot not C compatible sound card with the latest drivers, which I misread (laughs) as with laser drivers, which I I mean, if this game had laser drivers, I'd be, I'd be on board. I mean, I I really, I really like the art style here. It looks really cool, but yeah, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of gameplay sample footage. Yeah. So I'm not sure what this game is. The, there's the tag action along with it. So I'm not sure exactly what what prompted that. It may it may just be a point and click adventure game. Um it's, it certainly looks like that from like the one screenshot that actually looks like there's some in-game shit, but um, possibly, man. I mean, listen, I mean, if that's a game, if that's a legitimate game that they're rolling with, um you apps even at that price you have my interest i agree with you i'm digging on that art style but if this is some life is strange clicking simulator you can fucking keep it man i mean yeah it uh the very short bits of gameplay that i have seen make it look a bit more like dreamfall chapters rather than life is strange but definitely along those lines yes okay so i think our next game uh in our new game segment 
look like Smash Bros, but apparently I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah, apparently you've, I don't think you've ever seen a Smash Bros. Ben, so I'm not I'm not I'm just sure. Uh, this is Splash Blast Panico. Um, they have a demo. That's uh, the full game is quote unquote coming soon. It is a water gun style game uh, for four players. Uh, it has online multiplayer and co- uh, local multiplayer. And I don't I don't know. It seems sort of tower folly in the sense that you're you're just trying to kill a bunch of people on screen and sort of a last man standing type thing. I can kind of see where you get the Smash Brothers thing from, just from the health bars. But the the real Smash Brothers remake uh, on PC was Rivals of Ether, which I'm still really pissed that never got a Linux port because that game actually looked really fun and it was a straight up Smash Brothers clone. Um, I mean, yeah, the the Towerfall thing isn't too bad. It could be a fun little party game, and yeah, yeah really, really the big thing here is online multiplayer, which uh, Towerfall oh, yeah. was severely lacking in. So that was the biggest complaint that everyone ever had about Towerfall was like, where's the online multiplayer? Why can't I play with my friend without having to, you know, take a plane to go see him? It's like, let me play the game with people. Come on. I I, I will I will say that this guy only requires an Ubuntu 1204 live CD. So or Steam OS. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, the, there but, are no Steam OS live CDs. Hey man, I can dream Steam-Oz, and you can shut the hell up. How about that? Um <laughs> Dragon, not rocking this. Well, you're rocking a dragon all the way from 2004. Yeah, this this is the eye of the dragon, spelt like the letter I and not the E Y E I. I saw this and I said, "Wow, this game looks like a bunch of hot garbage." And then I looked to the right a little bit. Really, really <laughs> March 2004, and I said, "Okay, that that <laughs> that gives you that gives you a little leeway." I will say, Half Life Two was also 2004, but yeah, you know, we can't we can't we can't go around holding every game to that standard. Um, yeah, so it is. Uh, you can pick it up for about 7.99 or 7.79 Canadian. Um, you play as a dragon and you go around doing dragon things, burninating the people in their thatched roof cottages and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, uh, there, there's this is from Topware. They, they were, uh, yeah, they, they published it. So they're the publisher. So my guess is, is this one of them uh, wine ports? What they've been doing lately? Quite possible. Or, 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 or maybe it's they've redone it on the Vendetta engine. <laughs> right that could definitely be a thing um one of the like strange things if you look down at the reviews for this game coming from game shark doesn't exist anymore action trip game, game, game spy and you're you, you, juggalos i don't even know what that business is um jota de juegos <laughs> Bless there. you. Um, <laughs> yeah, <'cause I'm> tired. <laughs> right. Day for games. <laughs> what I'll say this is all those reviews are for the 2004 version of the game. The current version is apparently a hot piece of busted nope, regardless if it's a native port or not. And man, we, we've had the chance to play a lot of retro games lately. And the one thing that stuck out to me in that trailer is like, man, all cinematics were fucking 24 frames a second back in the day, period. Mm. That was just like a hard, hard fucking written rule, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. All you got right. something better? No, I never have anything better. What do you think this is? A show that's a bastion of quality? Shut up. Fuck that. <laughs> All right. Uh, clo- closing it out, we got uh, Kentucky Dash, which is another early access game. You can pick it up for about five bucks. And that's basically like an Infinite Runner style speedrunner where instead of a long, complicated, and nuanced circuit, uh, you race in a straight line and try to not touch the floor so i guess it's speedrunners meets the floor is made out of lava which i mean couldn't be a which isn't necessarily a terrible thing this one also apparently has online multiplayer yes. which is i i think deserves credit simply for that um so um th- i, I, I mean, like it, the it additional is notes man currently on loading the game and not responding message may appear selecting weight should allow the game to load and play normally question mark sounds like a unity game mm-hmm. <laughs> probably and the the art the art style kind of reminds me a little bit of um ultimate chicken horse mm-hmm. yeah i can see that uh mainly because of horses uh but i don't see the ultimate chickens uh <laughs> what is this early access 499 honestly we'll i'll probably just pick this up a gang of copies so we can play this and at some point so yeah 
Why not? It's got multiplayer. As right. long as it doesn't, I, I'm going to have to check with them because if it has, if they're just using like the default Unity matchmaking system of Nope. <laughs> you, you you mean you mean the Legend of the Magic Crystals patented Matchorama system? I'm talking about the one that doesn't, especially if they don't have like everyone in the same pool. They get like the EU section and Northern. Mm-hmm. We can't actually play together, which we've run into because they were using the you know just automated multiplayer oh, nonsense so if that's not in there uh i'd be happy with that but uh, yeah it looks kind of like linear speed runners um so mm-hmm. uh well, why don't you moonwalk us the hell out of here are, are, are you are you okay are you okay are you okay any you've been hit by you've been sucked by the news segment coming up next stick around no nvidia released a thing but before we get to that we need to talk about you Yes, you've been naughty, mm-hmm. very naughty, and we love it. We love it so much. Bring it. Give us all your money, or you know whatever you think is appropriate. Don't you, no, you have no. the worst <laughs> pickup lines. Um. I, I, I mean, yeah, pa- 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 Pedro's like, hey man, he goes up to the bar. Hey, hey man, you got you got two choices: my place or my trunk. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> no, it's, it's 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 never good. Being I'm just saying, girl. you would not make a very good prostitute. Dude, you'd get busted constantly. You're like, hey, give me money for what? Just give me money and I'll tell you later. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, give, give me money as you're ripping their pants off. And you can rip our pants off by heading on over to LinuxGameCast.com, <laughs> clicking the support the show button. We got all sorts of exciting stuff for you. Click on uh, Amazon affiliate links. Okay, I love this. Uh, the yeah. ad this week is for easy subscription <laughs> building. <laughs> I, I mean, have yeah. a Facebook F? <laughs> because, because F you, Pedro. <laughs> um yeah so we, we, got, we got amazon affiliate links for many many countries we've got new big affiliate links bitcoin donations paypal buttons libra pay you want to click on a button to give us money we give you all the buttons to click on you can also head on over to patreon.com slash next gamecast where you get some neat stuff for giving us money 115 of y'all are giving us about 249 you crazy people yeah, yeah. Uh, a week that that's pretty impressive you guys um that's been able to help us fund stuff like Thursday streams and Friday streams and Tuesday streams and bringing Jill on to give the show an an ounce of credibility by having a competent person show up for once. It lets us Um, do um, subpar reviews and hardware too. Isn't that right, Pedro? (laughs) Yes. Yes, it does. (laughs) Yeah. um, But, you know, being being a Patreon gets you a lot of cool stuff. Speaking of Jordan, Jordan, uh, uh, how's that headset mic review coming along now on year three? Um, eventually, once it passes through my lower intestine, <laughs> uh, we'll, 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 find, we'll ha- finally have the pro- appropriate quality control. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, being a Patreon gets you some cool stuff. Get access to Discord, early show note access, get your name in the credits. You can even, you know, be like, hey, I want to play some games with you, and we'll uh, accommodate you. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Streets. Show note access only for patrons. <laughs> Join the club. Show note access, dark. man. There, it's just an entire document full of pictures assets, of my ass. bringing it to you live and access oh, yeah. access to our discord where you can hang out with the psychopaths our lovely weird twisted family the other six days of the week that's where we do the things um we gotta thank some beautiful people yeah we got we got uh Sher- sherwig von haverstatten who's our newest patreon okay i think and, i did a better job uh, here's here's what um sherwig I, huff, huff. You, you you left a comment on Pedro's enunciation. You said you enjoyed it. I want a rating on Jordan's <laughs> as well. Sh- Sherig von Hovenstaven. <laughs> Hovenstaven. Listen, man. Jordan's Edwards. The, 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 last t- the last time I was in Germany, there were problems. So I don't have to pronounce your names properly. We also got to thank uh, Darkwing, who sent us some hardware. He gets to go up on uh, Frank's uh, fuckwall. Frank and fuckwall? we get a little letter from him, right? Isn't that right, Frank? That's right. Um, yeah. yeah. We got just enough room. So I got to get uh, Darkwing. You know Darkwing, Dan. But wrote in a little message. We got to check this business out because we are legally against our better judgment and the advice of our lawyers required to read it. Dan writes, Darkwing. Consider this an intervention to stop Jill's bad habit of throwing rave parties mid Linux weekly daily Wednesdays. So, whatever could he be talking about? I don't know. You have the box. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I got the box. No. He's talking you about the box. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> shut oh, up for a minute. Coming um, from right now. <laughs> no, this, this is got a brilliant. This is the PCIe USB 3 two port for 
Jordan's box because uh, if you noticed the during the review last week, it did get a little glow sticky, ravey, uh, strobe lighty. And if you were watching Wednesday's show, we almost oh, made yeah. it to the very end before it went psychotic seizure mode on Jill. Um, that was because of bad terminology and pedance mismatch, basically 30 60. And uh, it seems to be working. So, Jordan, prepare your ass because it's just about to flip out all for no reason. I smell toast. It's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for that. We'll get you on Frank's wall. You're already on uh, been upgraded in the credits. So stick around for all that nonsense. Yes, that's right. We will publicly shame you and say, yes, you, you've assisted our um, nightmare train going on. So let's get into the news, starting with uh, an old topic. Drivers. Oh, yes. Uh, in true LGC tradition, which we haven't done for the past several months, uh, it's drivers. Yeah. NVIDIA is finally finally released an update to the busted ass drivers that they have been putting out for the past half a year and well uh version 390.77 for the long-lived branch and versions 396.45 for the short-lived branch have been released they're available for download personally right now i'm running the 390.77 because i like the release highlights a bit better Ben. Every, everything's on fire, yo, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I've not really had any problems with them. I mean, this is bringing uh, improved compatibility with recent Linux kernels. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, they did reintroduce. Um, I'm using the short-lived branch. Uh, the issue I was having with Tomb Raider, because like for this brief period, I could play Tomb Raider, and it didn't flip out with a weird multi-monitor setup, which is not that weird. And this is the only game ever that has ever done this. But I, I knew better this, the day... It launched and I got it. I immediately from that day into like a day and a half later finished it. So I was like, peace out. Call a gif. I don't care, but it's still. Broken. Yeah. Um, there, there's some notes for uh, DXVK users as well. Um, version not six, three of DXVK was recently released. We're not talking about it this episode, but, uh, if you're going to be using the three ninety six forty five drivers, you probably want to upgrade to that because otherwise you will have problems. So yeah. pro chips. And it's uh, it's good to see NVIDIA actually putting out drivers because, yeah, the 390 series, it was fucked. Remember, Seriously, like, back back fucked. in the good days when we get driver <laughs> updates that had things like performance updates and improvements mm -hmm. and shit at them? Yeah, yeah. Me, me either. Um, yeah, that, that's why you gotta switch to AMD, get performance improvements every update. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 420 blaze at Yellow Swag, something smo smoke weed every day. Uh, Unreal Engine 420 is out. What's new? A couple of things. Uh, new cinematic depth of field support with Vulkan. They're doing some work with Steam authentication. So, with just the packet handlers and all that with the APIs, enabling them to like advertise your server properly if you're developing with Unreal Engine 4. Uh, and it'll handle VAC and all that fun stuff. So that's good. And they've also launched early access mixed reality capture support. It's probably going to be a long fucking time before we ever see the business on Linux, but it is there and uh, mobile devices. So you can play as a furry character with an RPG. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, this is this is kind of the Fortnite update. They were saying that a bunch of uh, shit that they did for Fortnite has made it into the main branch. Um, and a lot of that has to do with uh, mobile focus, which... I mean, could have a roundabout good thing for Linux in the sense that graphically demanding games on mobile will absolutely require Vulkan for performance mm -hmm. and battery life reasons. Mm -hmm. And improved Vulkan support means better Linux support for the three people who decide to, who deign to click export and give us a Linux version for us poor, starving Linux peasants. <sighs> yeah, and speaking of Linux, uh, if you do control off Linux, you get one result. Which is the SDK compatibility has now been uh, updated to support CLang 5.0 on CentOS 7. That that's it. Good, good, good. All right. Well, um, that that's enough talking about uh, smoking weed. Let's talk about doing some harder drugs, or at least whatever the guys on who uh, make PCS or PCS3 are on. Uh, they got a progress report for June 2018. Um, they've made some progress. Um, there's a couple games now. You don't that are... say in a fucking progress report. God damn. <laughs> absolutely, it's, as opposed to absolutely zero progress. That, that, that's also a progress report, man. Zero, zero, zero is a percent. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, um, Tekken Tag is almost fully playable. Dynasty Warriors Gundam is. Um, they got Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy 13s in game. Final Fantasy 13, 1, 2, and Lightning's Return or Revenge of the Sith or whatever. 
Um, there's still a bunch of performance gremlins, though, so it's not ready for prime time just yet. And uh, if you got some, if you got some PlayStation One games on your PSN account, you can play them via our PCS Three now, which is pretty cool. Um, not much on the Control F Linux. Um, or, 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 yeah, there's not much in the Control F Linux department. Uh, Ven, you wanna you wanna talk about that? No. <laughs> okay well uh to uh work off of you know Jordan's hey check this out just, just for the sole, for the sole reason of not letting pedro steal my shit yes i do um uh here's the thing man unify linux detection in cmake and that's basically just going to be converting all your spaces tabs and cmake list uh that is one of the updates but it is going to allow boom i had a little bug floating around um rpc i got Better name, guys. Uh, RPC S3 to build on Linux. When system Zlib is totes not found. So that's kind of a good way to sort that if you're building it at home and you can't find the Zlib. I mean, where would you fucking hide Zlib? Yeah, you, you have install mean... Zlib Devel, Zlib Devel. <laughs> I, I, every single distro ships with uh, not the developer package, obviously, but the. Uh, regular man, zlib and stuff man, now now i want to play some tekken tag god damn it <laughs> yeah Tekken tag the first one was pretty good never played the second though uh if you are uh like jordan mentioned you, the uh ps1 ports are available but it's just the psn versions if you're like me and you happen to have quite a few locally stored uh ps1 games that i <laughs> borrowed <discs laughs> then, then you from. gotta then you gotta <laughs> install uh pcsxr not yeah. RPCS. Not, not, make sure RPCS you don't install the Yar version. Yeah. Yar <laughs> PCS for true video game pirates. <laughs> Coming up next. <laughs> all right. So this is this is a little retrospective from uh, GitHub from their blog. You can find the links. All this mess in our show don't notes. Don't you mean from Microsoft? Mm, yeah. <laughs> still GitHub. Microsoft, GitHub, Minecraft. <laughs> X, X, listen, Xbox Live Source Control. Is that what we're going to start calling it now? Yes. All yeah. right. Well, from the latest blog post from Xbox Live Source Control, they're talking about games um, that are being made for the NES that are being developed today. Uh, and a couple of them are hosted on the GitHubs. Super Tilt Bros, Ponzi Adventures, or Pawn Adventure Z, Nova the Squirrel, Thwait. Um, these these are all interesting in the fact that you can load them up on a ROM that, or a, load them up on like an actual cartridge that the uh, NES can read, and these will actually play. Uh, so I guess it's good to, to highlight a couple of these games. Uh, the only one that kind of looks interesting is Super Tilt Bro, simply because they're like, what if you made Smash Brothers? In the, on the NES. Oh, yeah, man. I love seeing projects like that. And I like right at the end, they're like, oh, are you interested in 6502 assembly? It's like, fuck no. <laughs> super, um, tux, super Tux, not Super Tux card. The actual no, no, Super no, Tux no. game needs your help the, if you do. Well, yeah, but no, no, not, no, no, not, no, no, not no, related no. Pay, to pay, actually playing it on a NES. Right, 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 right. <laughs> that, 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 they just like threw that in at the end of the article. I'm like, by the way, Super Tux, they need some help. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely did a double take on that one. Hey, that's the thing. I thought that was interesting, and all of these projects are linked. All this business in our show notes, in the video description, or better yet, go to our web zone, look up the episode number, uh, since there seems to be a little confusion about that, or was. Mm -hmm. um, that's the thing. Put it in your face. Uh, did we get anything else? Uh, yeah, we got your review. Oh, God damn it. Uh, fine. Uh, check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I reviewed a $70 1080p60 HDMI capture card, because you want to do that right and use it for gaming yeah it'd be cool um <laughs> there's my magic talking hands that's what the track was called in katie and live when i was putting it together we're currently using these as we're putting together a bifrost system for um separate individual boxes click, click to start plucking ads <laughs> the man. irony oh the irony i love it hey man <laughs> click 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 and you know give us all those monies man so at the end of the day, I mean, this thing's seventy nine ninety nine. It does what it says on the tin. I kind of ran through it. You know, it really does. 1080p 60. If you have USB 3, uh, doesn't overheat. We've run it for multiple hours at a time. Completely plug and play. Uh, it's not like Windows. This is Linux. You plug it in. It works. It's video for Linux. Uh, lag free. I'm going to say this thing is slightly less noticeable lag than a Steam Link. And completely priced to sell. The only issue I 
did have with it is the occasional pixelization when recording. I got some screenshots. It's also in the video, just with the setup, so you can play, you know, hey man, here's this, it's captured with X composite or the HDMI and some singular screens and all that business because uh, you guys basically helped us buy this stuff and I want to start doing a lot more of, um, it was kind of funny because I had to get like one of the cameras like on a scan, you know, stand and point it down to do that stupid shot that everyone does. And I, I kind of walked back down here and it looked like the uh, Logitech camera was like, oh, look, a penny. <laughs> <laughs> it was jacked down like that. Decent piece of kit if you're wanting to pick it up on the cheap. And after like probing this thing, like anally, the hardware, I'm almost positive. Um, it's the same bit of hardware that you would find in the AVR Media's Extreme Cap U3, which is like 160 bucks. So... Yeah. All right. The aristocrats. Finally, finally, we got a Kickstarter, but they have a demo. So yes, and a Kickstarter that's already over. They were looking for 10,000 wet sticky caches, and they got a little bit more than that. So the game will hopefully see the light of day at some point. Uh, they also have a demo. Yes, a Linux demo. And you can play, since this was the Kickstarter for Krug. Crossnick Plus, um, uh, you can also play the original Crossnick on your browser, so they claim I didn't actually try it. Uh, and uh, they say it's a love letter to Japanese puzzle games from the late 90s. So, Dr. Mario? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. It's just one of those competitive puzzle game thingies that uh, you could play against someone else. And you're not entirely sure what the hell you're doing. You just know that some tiles have disappeared you, now. For l- l- listen, you have apparently you have to make T's. That's the goal of the game. <laughs> and you know what T stands for, then? Hey, man, uh, it's a thing. Uh, Gray? This is uh, it's a puzzle game. I don't know what more to say about this. This is uh, I, I'm going to guess this is probably something empty threw in without crediting himself because. But there's your mention. I didn't put it in there. All right, All right, cool. That that's it. Coming up next, we are going to go into battle. Valkyries on our side as we ride across the Rainbow Ridge to Valhalla and other Viking stuff. Fine, here we are. Now your journey has reached the end of its trail because today is a fine day to die. We shall meet again in a great hall in the sky and be till the end of time. Or at least until the end of this review. This is a chair acquisition for Die for Valhalla, developed by Monster Couch, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 10 of your local wet stinky currencies, unless you're in Canada, in which case it's closer to 15. Uh, what is it? Die for Valhalla is an action RPG where you hack, slash, and crash your enemies, uh, possess, and take full control of heroes, monsters, and other things. To help the Vikings save their realm. Uh, the devs sent some keys for this, so thanks a bunch. And this is the chair acquisition where we take your game and then break it down to its base levels and then say disparaging remarks about its mother. And also rate it on a scale from one to four chairs. So we, we break it up into two sections here. We got the facts, the does it launch performance, graphics, and control, and we assign it a one to four chair score. And then we give it a more nebulous one to four chair score for fun. That's the review. So let's kick this off. Then how 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 to do on Ubuntu? Um, on the distribution that it should work on. Um, hey man, Ryzen 7 1700, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, NVMe drives, 980s, and all that shit. Right? Does it launch? Yes, it launches. Seems legit. How does it perform? We'll <laughs> look at it. Um, solid 60. Uh, wouldn't say it had chuggy, but it wasn't perfectly smooth. But it always hit 60, 100 on that. Graphics. Again, look at it. It looks like Streets of Rage and Don't Starve Together. Had a baby. Use condoms, kids. Um, <laughs> controls. You can't unpossess shit. More about that in the fun section with the Steamy controller. Also, wasn't about to try to play a brawler with a keyboard. So, this is going to get uh, three functioning chairs for me and one crippled, mangled, fucked up chair. Because those controls, man. The hell. I mean... So on, on Fedora 2864 bit with the uh, i7 6700K, GTX 1080 Ti, NVMe drives, and all that good stuff, it definitely does launch. <laughs> Hold 60 at UHD. Uh, sometimes it'll it'll drop below 
but I um, that that had that's kind of because there's really no option to disable VSync or anything like that. It's just kind of capped at the max frame rate it will support. Um, and for the control wise, I was pleasantly surprised. I always am because I like using the uh, the DualShock this boy right here. Uh, and it had correct button prompts, which is fairly rare these days. And no issues with the controller, unlike the rest of you guys. Apparently, they just tested this on a DualShock and called it a day, and I'm 100% fine with that. So it gets yeah. four chairs from me, four green checkmarky chairs. Yeah, not so four, this... Not Bismarcky chairs. This was a new one for me, because with the Ryzen uh, 1600 and the GTX 1080 running on Solus with the... 4K display right here on my left and the two 1080s on my right. That brings us to a total of uh, 50, uh, sorry, 5,760 pixels wide. Uh, and I still wasn't able to make out just what the hell was going on because the game, in its infinite wisdom, decided to spawn the first time I launched it in a 10,000 by 10,000 pixel window. Yeah, so. Off to the Unity prefs file I went, set it to UHD, and well, then it worked just fine. Uh, the performance, it it's okay. It's um, it holds sixty. It's just during the loading screens that it seems to dip a little bit, but that's fine. Uh, the graphics, yeah, like Ven already mentioned, it looks a lot like Don't Starve, but with Vikings. Uh, the controls, yeah, much like Ven, the right analog stick to unpossess characters is broken if you use an X input controller. Uh, it's, uh, be it like the 8-bit do TD Tiny controller or the Mistress, the Steam controller, just couldn't do it. On the keyboard, it works fine, but it doesn't give you the ability to rebind keys on the keyboard. So it loses two chairs as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, that's moral of the story. Play this game on Fedora with a DualShock. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how about the fun section, Ben? Do you do you enjoy yourself? Man, I I almost got it right. I thought Pedro could do like five minutes to answer four simple questions. Almost, <laughs> almost four minutes thirty two <laughs> seconds. Almost, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is our subjective part over here on eighteen oh four. I forgot to mention that again. This is Streets of Rage and Don't Starve Together. They had a baby. It's Ground and Pound Brawler. They had an ability to possess shite that. Frankly, I couldn't use, and that's really kind of a bad thing, but not for the reasons that you might think. You see, the thing is, I was more than happy playing it with uh, my swingy swordman character for the hour of time I did put into it. So here's where it kind of fell apart, because if your neat mechanic, your unique idea, the thing that you get, this possession mechanic, if it can be ignored, it might not be that neat, Brad. It just might not. Um... I kind of quit reading the kind of middling dialogue when the word, and I shit you not, millennial showed up in the text. It's like, nope, oh, skip, yeah, yeah. That, skip, that, that, skip. That one was a thing. <laughs> uh, what do you have? You got skill upgrades after each level. I ended up just kind of picking random shit because I'm a bitch. I played it on normal difficulty, and on normal, normal difficulty, this thing shits health. So you don't really have to worry about anything else. I mean, just it's like, oh, I needed some health. I'd run over to a fucking bush. And I was like, boom, heart, done. Uh, unlike Pedro, I refuse to play a fucking brawler with a keyboard, so I know I am missing out on some of that fun, some of those mechanics that would make the game kind of enjoyable or more enjoyable. But if you're anything like me, old man Vin, heed my vote organ. For this game, me. Uno cero. How do you say chair in Portuguese? I, I'm just fucking with you. I don't care. Go ahead. No, no, no one cares, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad little beat em up. Um, the body swapping thing is a little interesting insofar as in the some of the later levels, things get a little clusterfucky and you'll get your ass killed and you'll need to uh, swap between a couple uh, different dudes. And there's different strategies. Usually I just go with the sword and board guy because he seems to be the uh, fastest attacker, which um, seemed to work out for me. Um the levels do get a little samey at times, but they they keep adding enough like new enemies and obstacles to keep it fresh. Um, but yeah, no, those those um, those uh, little in between humor segments, quote unquote, hmm. contractually mandated, are not very good. Yeah, mm. they're, the the writing's not too great, uh, but the gameplay is really solid. And the the RPG mechanic system reminds me of a tabletop game I'm a fan of called Fate of the Normans Ragnarok. And I'm pretty sure my buddy Andrew, who makes that, is gonna probably want to sue somebody about that because <laughs> it's a little it's a little close there. 
especially with uh, some of the presentation with uh, the runes and whatnot. Um, but it's still it's still solid. Uh, I, I tried to spec into attack and do as much damage as possible, and that seemed to be a uh, good strategy. They have, they have um, other power ups that a couple of them kind of seem useless, involving summons. I couldn't figure out how to summon shit. So the summons are what you do when you bring the Vikings back to life. Oh, really? That's mm-hmm. what they call them. Yeah, you pound on the uh, grave and you're like, "Wake up, motherfucker!" I didn't see that. that <laughs> I guess that was not made clear to me. But anyways. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's fun. I I enjoyed it. I sunk about two hours into it, and then I looked at the clock. I'm like, oh well, I guess I can put it down now because I have enough for the review. Um, but I'm what would really what would really steal the deal for this is some online multiplayer because there's there's local co-op, mm-hmm. and I think this, what you meant would, to say is what would keep you coming back to this. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and 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 again, like this is this is a great little brawler. That you need like a Charlie murder mode where like you have to beat people up so you can go to the next area. <laughs> um, and that's not there. I'm going to give it three chairs, though, just because it is solid. It's pretty fun if, you, if you're if you playing it on the appropriate hardware that has been configured properly a la Topware Interactive. Yeah. Basically yeah. own a PS4 <laughs> DualShock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it looks a lot like crawl and the possession ability that uh, crawl had. Uh, you just uh, you're a spirit and you're taking uh, you're possessing and crawl. Uh, you one of you would get to be the hero and everyone else would get to play as the enemies. So here it's a little bit more straightforward than that. You just possess the heroes and you make yourself through the waves of uh, uh, AI controlled enemies. I the action is solid. It, it's um, it's a bit let down by the lack of proper uh, sound effects, but it the background music on the other hand is pretty good. So there's a bit of a dissonance there. Uh, the roguelite elements, which this game has a plenty of, are um, well, uh, they mostly manifest in the way that if the Viking that you've been controlling for several uh, stages now dies, well, now you just have to start with the base level one. But as you progress and you kill enemies, uh, the Valkyrie that you're controlling also powers up. And like Jordan said, uh, getting a lot of damage is a pretty good way to go about things because it made the troll fight kind of a walk in the park. Uh, the Honestly... I wish I could have played this with a controller. That's the, immediately what my hands reached for when the game started. It's like, oh, it's one of them, right? Why can't I unpossess characters? Yeah, that needs to be fixed. And it's not a horrible game after you, you know, bring down the window from ten thousand by ten thousand pixels. It shits victory from it. heaven. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, three chairs for me. Oh right, I got Jordan muted because he was yawning. Hang on. <laughs> Go for it. Take two. No, it does, no. My see that joke was brilliant. Y'all would have laughed, and now you're denied it. Fuck you all. So, uh, what do we think? Uh, I think it's yes. uh, we on the heavy price side for something that doesn't have rebindable controls in 2018. What the fuck? Um, mm-hmm. uh, and on that on online multiplayer. That again, that's sort of the come on, come on, guys, add that in. Right. F- figure out a way to do that. That's, that's got to be yeah. in there before I can give the same type of recommendation. So. Uh, we got some hate incoming. Yeah, coming up next, we 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 enter our our fucking eighteenth chapter in our fucking Beowulf saga of rechargeable batteries. <laughs> Stay tuned for a reading of that, boys and girls and indeterminate <laughs> gender people. What do you say we put a wrap on this particular? I, I say you're no getting shorter in every segment. <laughs> okay right let's get short well, well, get in touch with well, us well, pedro wrap it you have to you have to it's it's a rap battle you have to rap about contacting us all right you go first mm, all, all right, right. <laughs> all right pedro back to uh, um. <laughs> 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 okay uh, so uh, if you'd like to let us know just how bad uh, jordan's beatboxing was there please go to lewisgamecast.com hit the contact button and uh, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Uh, Switch the... to a 15-year fixed loan, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's the best way to get in touch with us. You can also leave us a comment on uh, 
wherever we post this, especially on Patreon, if you happen to be giving us some monies, but we've already covered the shilling, so let's get down to date. And this week, we start off with Dominic, and he's talking about Jack and Odd. Streaming question, how do you use, how do you stream uh, Jackbox to the rest of the LGC team with minimal latency? Have a custom RTMP server or through a service like Twitch? Appreciate your help slash time. Uh, you you want to take a crack at this? I uh, mean, I mean, I I I I know what the answer is. It's, it's virtual cams, virtual cam copious, all the things, copious use of virtual cams and Jitsi and mm. cocaine. <laughs> I, I was just going to say drugs. Um, <laughs> lots and lots of drugs. I was going to keep it fa- family friendly. <laughs> drugs. Um, yeah, that's really all we do. I, I thought about that, and I decided to put that into it. This was a. Uh, Dominic, Dominic hit me up on Twitter and he's like, yo, and I was like, hmm, all right. I guess that's not as easy because we've been doing it for so many years. It's like the evolution of like, oh yeah, just derp, 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 derp. Yeah, we, there, there, there've been a couple iterations of this solution that we've come up mm-hmm. with. <laughs> and this is not quite our final one. Um, <laughs> this isn't even our final form. To do this, I mean, if you're looking to do anything like that, like you need real-time feedback and you can't wait for stream delay, a super easy way to do that is uh, I've, I've even done an instructional video on a video for Linux, video, V4L2. Um, look that up loopback. to a loopback device and feed that to... I even have instructions to make it work with a Chromium-based stuff. Then you'll create a little virtual cam if you want to capture it in a smaller window or if you have an extra monitor or anything like that, you can feed it to that and just use that free return video because you'll only have like maybe a half second delay at most. Yeah, it, it, it's no worse than like webcam delay because it's, it's a virtual webcam. So Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, up next, we got uh, George and he's again, uh, Bale part two. So he says, hey, double A batteries using lithium tech actually exist, but most are only available through eBay and AliExpress. I read that as Alien Express for some reason. <laughs> No idea Slow why they from aren't Singapore, baby. No idea why they aren't available in more local web stores. Maybe there is something to the notion of them being too good to be profitable? Question mark. Uh, yeah. So you you have a response for this? Being the the battery vape head guy who eats batteries. <laughs> battery man. Eats batteries, battery man <laughs> does whatever. Oh, blam. Um, yeah, vape batteries. Uh, that's kind of what you're talking about. What you're talking about is uh. AA batteries. So what are those? 1.4, 1.5 volt? Uh, that's going to be dealing with lithium AA's. They do exist, but the cells require circuitry to crank down uh, what you'd normally get out of your lithium cells. It's going to be three points. So, hang on. Jordan's going to go on. Into the mic. <laughs> uh, you got to crank down that voltage. So you, you will be stuck you know, with uh, the cells, with circuitry inside the cells, and you're going to be using a proprietary charger for that because your Lion cells, your 18650s, 2700s, 2700s, like I said, they're all 3.7 volts. They're just a wee too big to fit into a AA application. Giggity. Now, I think, Pedro, it's the reason you don't see uh, the extra expense and all that in the custom chargers. Four double A's is the nickel metal hydride and IMH batteries. They're solid text. They're cheap and they fucking work. It is. And yeah, no, uh, if anything, wrong as I was about the uh, Amazon uh, so rechargeable wrong. batteries. So wrong. They, uh, they last a freaking hell of a long time. The ones on the uh, Steam controller, they've been in there for over four months now. Still rocking. So yeah, no, uh, um, Nickel metal hydrate batteries. Nickel back They're, metal hydrate. Yeah. Hydrate. <laughs> Look at this battery. Every time I see it, it makes me tea. <laughs> Got it on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, Amazon UK does sell double A lithium ion batteries. They're just you, uh, really sketchy brand. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I saw, I went looking on the Zons for uh, lithium double A's. They sell them in the States, but for a four pack with a custom charger is like 48 wet stinky caches. Yeah. And they're not cheap. It's like, <laughs> fuck that noise. Cause then you're not dealing with like a 1.4, 1.5 volt cell. You're dealing with 3.7. That's been, those things are little grenades too. So yeah. keep that. And, uh, Duracell mm-hmm. makes some, but they're, uh, non rechargeable. Mm-hmm. They're cheaper, but they're not rechargeable. Higher energy density, but, uh, yeah, yeah just, just get some regular rechargeables. Uh, your, your, your body will thank you. And they're not as delicious, uh-huh. but 
you know, they're free range. Though the, the, you you do want to stick with disposables if you ever get turned into a pickle and need to build the laser. <laughs> you know what? On that bombshell, let's cue the music, right? Maybe. Because you can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time, where we're obeying the taco clock, because that's a new thing we're trying to do, being punctual. It's fucked up. It's weird. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can do that. I'm at Vin Stone on Twitter. I'll always at least click the heart button, because back in my day, it was a star, and I didn't feel creepy hearting shit, but I'd do it. And I might even reply to you. I'm good like that. And uh, Vin Stone on the internet. Google Plus. It's thing makes you feel better it's not actually a heart it's more supposed to be a butt uh but you can find me on the internet claiming that the taco clock means that when it reaches zero it's time to eat tacos at the burning fool on twitter plus jordan spung on google plus now i want tacos pedro give me a taco i too would go for tacos right now to be honest i am pedro Mathieu. i you dare you go me. wake up nori right now and be like let's go get tacos let's get some tacos there's a, a 24 hour place tacos Thing that good old, good old 24 beer. hour taco hut. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus with them with those on Google Plus. So, uh, things learned this evening. Um, there weren't any. Hey, man, I, 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 I learned that you should give me a taco before I stab somebody. <laughs> <laughs> what is Jordan Swain gonna have to snap somebody? Because he's—I don't know. I, maybe we learned that. Fuck it. Credits. <laughs> Wait, wrong credits. <laughs> Denied. Those are the Wednesday wah, credits. Wah. <laughs> wah wah wah. Hang on. Let's get some regular credits. Oh Switch man, you. those credits are gonna be fucked up long too, guys. Oh man. We'll do that <laughs> in the post show. <laughs> This is what you get when you don't give me tacos. See? I, I, all right, Fate. This is how it works. See, you, you guys are listening and watching right now. The credits are fucking rolling. Because, damn it, I got distracted. And, um... You know what? Distracted by tacos. Uh, here, here's a preview of Wednesday. Fuck it. We gotta have something running in the background. <laughs> something to cover up. See, I'm Under still here. <laughs> See, the... I'm, I'm Jill Bryant, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> making declarative statements about my identity. I, yes. I can make that happen. <laughs> See, well, we, we, we got we got to do the switcheroo where like, I spend a week at Jill's place and she spends a, spends a week at my place. <laughs> we just pretend like nothing's changed. And I'm going to get some nasty phone calls from Steve, aren't I? Yeah, it's like, keeps touching me in places. <laughs> That's right. Uh, th- thanks, everyone, for watching another week- Weekly Daily Wednesdays. We'll be back next week, bitches. <laughs> Brought to you by Stranger Things. Time to fight. Uh. Five dudes.